everybody. Welcome back. Hello, ich bin Stipiagit. My name is Piagit, and this is Floss Tube number three. And today's April 4th. And, well, I have a few things. Um, no, no progress on any of my stitching. Still haven't managed to sit down. Um, tonight I'm going to shut down the store a little earlier. Actually, that's wrong. I did stitch a little bit on the um, Tyndale sampler. And my husband said, I need to shut the doors earlier <laughs> if I want to get stitching done. And I'm like, I will feel so guilty if people have questions. But that's okay. I'll try. I'll try. But anyways, um, I got a bunch of history. We're going to do a little bit of frame opening of what I started last time. Um, there's a little bit of memory lane. There is an idea for a new start I posted about. And um, this is one little bit of history I have. And I'm not sure you can see it too. Oh yeah, there you go. So this is a J and a K, and it's Josef Kunz, and it's the only fancy piece of embroidery I have from my grandparents' side on my dad's side. So on my dad's side, they were farmers, and they lived in a tiny village. 300 was it. And <laughs> I got some good stories from there. So I lived there until we were three, and then we moved to... Miesenbach, where I lived until I moved, well, I moved out to a neighboring town when I was an adult, 18, but, and was on my own, but pretty much I lived in that area until I moved to the States in 85. So this little, this little um, initial, and then one tablecloth, really rough slash bed sheets. I forgot to ask my mother what it actually was, but um, it was quite old because my grandmother actually initialed that and it, instead of the J, she used the I. And my mom said this was actually on pillowcases for their wedding. So my grandmother did not stitch this, but it's all that survived from there. And it was a town when my mother said, <laughs> when when my dad asked my mom to marry and she said yes as long as we don't live up here because it was the end of the world and my mom thought she would just be tucked away and never see the light of day again <laughs> because there was literally nobody and not only that their farm was like at the end of the village and it was a breezy, breezy hill and they only had an outhouse which my mom wasn't thrilled with the only place you could wash yourself was in the kitchen. I mean, it was deep down country over there. I mean, it was fun to visit as a kid, but not, I, you know, my mother, I never understood early on because I always thought it was so cool to go there. But now as an adult, I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't have wanted to live there either. So it was kind of cool, you know, to have that. And it's still in the family. Um, one of my cousins, um, my dad's brother's son, you know, took took that over. Of course, modernized and everything's nice now, but, you know, back in the day. So that's when we built our house in Miesenbach, and I got to make mud pies. So enough of that. Let's get into it, and let's get started. I'm going to go flip the camera, and I'll see you guys shortly. Okay, we're going to start off, once again, with a little bit of history. And um, so first thing... So I want to talk about is the lace and I don't know if the English word is bobbin lace for this or not but in Germany we called it Klöppelspitze and my great grandmother's sister Their family, they all remained in the East after after the war. So they never, you know, fled to West Germany the way my side of the family did. Um, 
So Tandagadi, and I'm trying to think, it was... It was on the Spindler side, but I don't remember all of the family connections exactly. But they were lace makers. They had like like a mini lace making factory. And it was, I remember I was 12 and my sister, let me see, she was five years older. So she was 17 when we were allowed to visit them for the first time in East Germany. And my mom was such a brave mom. I would have never done that, but she was good. She put us on a train to East Germany by ourselves. <laughs> I thought it was an adventure back then, um, but times were gentler, and you got to ride your bike all over town, and nobody worried. These days, you go down the street, and you have to be afraid you're going to be kidnapped. So anyways, back to the train. Um, one of the scariest things on the train was it was... This lady in the caboose over was escorted off the train, and we were so scared, us two girls, and come to find out she had a bunch of magazines tied around her waist and covered with her shirt, and she was hoping to smuggle in some West German magazines, which was not allowed, very bad, so we don't know what happened to her, but I feel so bad that, you know, you have to lock up a country and can't even let them know what's going on on the other side. So anyways, our family there was not allowed to visit us because they weren't old and decrepit enough. Because only if you were old and decrepit did you get to come, you know, to the West when they didn't need you anymore for work. And they were lace makers. So they lived on this, in this valley and they had the house, and not too far away was the little factory, and there was a couple of other buildings. I'm trying to remember, you know, with my age, but I remember one day my mother getting a letter, and she was really upset, saying the government decided that that valley was needed for a dam, and they had to get out and find themselves a new place to live. I think they got very little reimbursement. Obviously, the factory had to quit at that point, and they sent us a bunch of the laces, you know, that they had on hand, and they found apartments and ugly places to live, and their home was put underwater. It's kind of sad. So these were some of the little collar laces. So they're round. They're not ironed. I just keep them in a box because I don't know what to do with them. They're just too pretty to... I don't know. <laughs> They're all like little, you know, sections that could be cute. There's the wool samples. Oops, sorry. That's from, from oh, you know her, Jane Parsons, wool samples. Then there is some, obviously, that are straight. I don't know if this is one from them. This one is too fat. That may just be something I put in here. But this is like a long one, and I should wrap that with this, you know, around the board, but there's like, that's also from a family member, not from the factory. And this is not from the factory. That's regular lace, but so, you know, there's these and pretty, pretty, pretty laces. I don't know what to make or do other than they just stay in this little box and just look pretty and of course my boys have absolutely no interest <laughs> you know I was like oh maybe if I had a shirt I could put it on a collar but you know then I'd have to worry about washing it and I don't know so they sit here and look pretty in the little box oh, let me put this back in because I do need that even has like the old windy wooden card. I guess there was paper around the whole thing. Don't know, but it's old. So very pretty. And now also for history, some of the stuff that I think <laughs> I don't throw much away. That's why we have a lot of stuff to go through when we move. And my husband with his stuff likes his things too so between the two of us oh my goodness gracious you know we're gonna need like 
three band lines to move, but besides this is from 94, this is May 94. I just recently brought it to the surface because there's actually a sweater in there. I wanna, I think I wanna knit. But look at all the pretty stitching stuff that's still in here. I mean, I wouldn't stitch this, but bits and pieces could be used for something like that's cute. That's cute. That's so German. <laughs> yeah, and I love how they show a little bit Richelieu, I think, is that's what it's called. So, anyways, I want to get to the cute little sweater. Oh, there's lots of sweaters in here. Lots of good colors. Oh, so 90s. But I want to um, knit the Trachtenjeksche right here. This one. Let me hold it up close so you can see. Is that not adorable? I love it. I have a skirt like that think that would be so cute. I think my husband would like that too. But he's big. That would be a lot of knitting. <laughs> so anyway, so that's from, from Anna. Then this is the little friendship sampler. And it's this little kit. And it comes with the gauze and the threads. I haven't given up on that. Can still be done. 97. And then this is much, much older. So this is, let me see. Is there a year on this? This is Dover. I don't know. But this is like a, a magazine and it has like also a little bit than the Dover needlework sampler. So it has like a little bit of everything. Knitting, stitching. So I think this is actually way older. I wish they would put a year on these, but they don't. Hmm. New York. Oh, great. And this is way old. So this is actually an antique I bought many, many moons ago from the DM. So this is DMC Library. I don't know. Third series. Mulhouse, France. So there's a, a bunch of you know, stuff in there. I'm not going to show them all because they may or may not still be copyrighted. So, but it's a, if you can, you can find this easily on the secondary market. So, even the outside looks cool. And then a book, if you can still get it, I'm sure you can on the secondary market, is the, the Pioneer Memorial Museum Sandburst. It's from Utah, and it's a really, and it came with this, the little motif book. And I love that for these samplers, they are so pretty, and they don't have the patterns in here, but um, I think at some time they did sell the patterns there. But the histories, and these are, you know, American samplers so it's such a, a fun read to find out and I mean if you're really good at it with a magnifying glass you couldn't publish it but you certainly could probably stitch one I don't know that would be a lot of work and then this I think she just did a bunch of motifs from the samplers if I'm not mistaken so I'm just going to look, yes, because I can't show you. This is just all, all patterns in here. And it's whimsywit at AOL.com. And I don't know if she still has that. Um, but it is, you know, um, little motifs from the samplers that you see in the book. So you could make an entire sampler with those, you know. Pick a border out of one of these. I thought this was very good and if you have a chance to get this. Go for it. Then this is a sampler I think is still worth stitching from Butternut Road even though it's eons ago. I look at this and I think I might change some of the colors but you know make it 
not dark and moody, but this could actually look really pretty, you know, bright and cheery. So I'll have to go look. That would be well worth still doing. And it is, um, Ninety nine, so that's a long time ago. And now, my favorite, Piba Climas. <laughs> I think she is so worth still stitching now, and definitely am not losing any of her patterns. Love Apple Girl. This is a definite must. I think this could be really. This is um, the Country Church. You know, when I see my other piece over one, this could be such fun over one. Or if you find a really good, instead of stitching all this, just stitch the tree, the church, and then find a really nice marbled fabric that could be very, you know, very effective for, you know, the background with all the fabrics we have these days. Who knows? Oh, I love the geese. Geese are my favorite. Another one on the right fabric, you would not have a lot of stitching to do and could eliminate that background. Don't like the colors of this, but I love the geese. This is too orangey red for me. I'm not a red person, really. I love the engagement. I would probably get rid of the pinks, but it is cute. And this is really pretty, too. Grandpa's house. June Griggs did such an awesome job with these. This is the horse. And this I would not stitch as a stocking, but I certainly like elements of it. Like the little church on the hill with like just this section would be kind of cool. Okay, and here comes some of my really old stuff. This is from 1800s and it's definitely ancient. Aus Liebe dem, right here, Aus Liebe dem guten Vater zur Erinnerung und Willkommen. Out of love for my good father. Um, and then this is like the next word, you know, in to erinnerung, remember me and welcome. So those were all words I guess you could use for whatever. Oh my God, these are so falling apart. I should put those in something different. And let me see, do they have, like here is some, these are delicate. So these are all little pattern booklets, you know, that were in their day free. The inside and outside has alphabets and, you know, numbers. And I've seen these done many a times. I might actually sit down and rechart some of these because they are kind of cool. Look at this. Pretty, huh? So, moderne Stickvorlagen, and this is Berlin, and there's, oops, <laughs> there's the cover, and the stag, and then a bunch of inside ones, and then on the back, Fabrikmarke. So, I guess they showed all the places it was traded, Vienna, so Wien, Berlin, Sydney, London, London. Philadelphia, wow, check that, and Berlin, und Berliner Gewebeausstellung, 1879, so uh, the Berlin Fabric Exhibition in 1879, Fabrikmarke, HKB, I don't know, HKB, HK Berlin, don't know who HK was, I should, but I don't, yes, and then here are you know, flowers and alphabets, more alphabets, more alphabets, souvenir, that's French, 
more alphabets. Alphabets coming out the nose. This actually came in handy. Dem guten Vater, Mutter zum Andenken. See, mother, father, same same little piece as there. So these were, you know, all over the country. There's some colory stuff. But it all came with this. And this is um, Schaplonen zur Wäschestickerei. And metal stencils for embroidering linen. So they obviously send this to France and Russia. So lots of places. And um, so what they, and this still has everything in it. So these are the little plates that you you took, so for an example, here's the A. Let me flip it the other way, so. And then you would take it and put it on your fabric and you would moisten. This is actually the original little ink pot right there. And you put water on it and then you stencil it on your fabric and then you stitch over it, so. It was like stamped stitching, <laughs> like stamped cross stitch. <laughs> so, and then, you know, they had little, little borders. And then I like this one. Very pretty. Let me see what else there is. Then I had little, don't know. Oh, those are, hold on, numbers. One through ten, not very good numbers. Oh, and somebody practiced in here, you see? Before they went elsewhere with it. And let me see, this is also, so they both just have a bunch of, bunch of metal. I think they're copper, not sure. Stencils. So that's that. And I think this set here, so that you wouldn't mess up. The bigger ones back in. And then this also has patterns in it. I'll show you in just a sec. And then this opens up into a pattern booklet. Pictures everywhere. I mean, it's so pretty. This is going through a couple of my older finishes. This I had framed for the longest time, and it's a piece, was unstitched on even weave, and it was framed and everything, but I was not the greatest in the frame. But let me bring this up close. This, I think, what's his name, Steve? Plumcheck. I'm not 100% sure if I'm saying that correct, but I think that's what it was the pattern. And this entire thing I stitched over one. I'm going slow because you guys said I need to go slower. So I'm trying my best. But it still is such a pretty piece and I want to get it back in the frame. This was the day where you had like five million mats and everything around it and I think it would be really charming in just a, a tiny little, I had it in a dark brown frame and that looked really good and I think I want to get another one that's just a tiny little dark brown frame to put it in so I can hang it back up because it is so detailed being over one that it actually looks like a little painting. And I love it so much. Let me go grab the other one I want to show you guys. Yes, here he is, Father Winter. So this was a piece I stitched for a competition. And I absolutely love Teresa Lensler patterns. And I started a couple, but this one, it also needs to actually probably be reframed one day because it is... Um, like in a triple matted frame. I'm going to bring everything up a little so it zooms out a bit. So it's going to wobble for a second. Let's see if I can... Yeah, that's as 
far as this goes. Let me do one more adjust. Zooming out. Well, that's better. Well, except we're a little bit crooked now. Let's see. I hope this works for you guys. There we go. I need my footstool now. I can't see. It's so far up. So anyways, this is him. And one thing that was always the case, because for many of you who probably stitched Teresa Wensler will remember that you basically had to set up your own floss box because she really didn't take any threads out of the box as is. They were all blended. I had like, you know, the little bottom boxes that we had. They were like just full. Those were her threads because she tended to blend the same stuff. But this one was so lovely because of that border. So... Let me go slow. So each one of those, and she repeats it, you know, is a different little section with white work and the bunnies. And a lot of back stitching with her too. But now, these days I couldn't do this again. I stitched this in six weeks. But I was a young mom, you know, the kids napped. I didn't really have anything else to do at that time. And there's the bottom. And so I got it stitched fairly quickly by stitching many hours a day. 1992. I love those cartouches. That's so pretty. But... This was one of my favorites. It did get first place, but while I value the first place there, but it was, you know, there wasn't much competition. It wasn't like there was just stitching. It was a, a crafting show. So there were all sorts of crafters. And, you know, if there would have been a lot more other stitch pieces to compete with, <laughs> it would have been more of a competition, but, you know. I wasn't competing against just stitching, so it still is kind of cool that it was first place, but I think if it would have been, you know, other stitchers there would have been more fun than probably somebody else would have gotten it. <laughs> so let me go put this I book away. start with um, the two samplers that I had in the last floss tube that I couldn't um, open up because they were, well, this one was taped so much so i'm gonna start by opening this i couldn't get the tape off i mean it's ripping part of the backer boat off so i'm hoping i can get it out and this one's going to be much easier so we're going to do that second but this is the first one and i hope i'm going slow enough because people have been saying i've been going so fast and that is one of my problems i walk fast i talk fast so yeah, so none of this was coming off like here. It just went through the wood. So I'm hoping that I can pull out the little, the little, these things. They're kind of called arrowhead points. They're framers points. There's different one types of length. I use some that are just a wee bit longer. So I'm hoping that by getting this out with the um, tape on there, it might work. So let's see, this is probably pretty boring for you, but there aren't too many, so it shouldn't take too long. Every now and then I have to go look up there to make sure. And this was the plastic or the the fake wood frame. I don't know what you call that composite material. 
I'm sure it has a name, but there's a lot of frames these days made with that. So, but there was no way that I was going to get that off. I don't even know if I'm going to save the backer board. The frame is not my most favorite, but it might have an application elsewhere. I mean, it's simple and black, so could go on to, you know, one of the little marking samplers, the monochrome ones. I don't know. We'll see. Ow! Ooh, that was dumb. So, let's move that over. Let me see. This is just about it. So, let's see. Don't get bored. <laughs> going to be interesting to see what the back of that sampler looks like and the front. Let's see, is this... Are we stuck? There we are. There is still more. Anywhere else? Oh my goodness. It's just laying in there on the glass. Ay -ay. On the backer board and on the glass. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. So, ooh, that's a pretty blue. And see, this is what's happening now. This thread is stuck in the tape and stuck in the tape up here. So, I don't know if I want to use that for anything. I might. It's anti reflective, so that's not bad. Might be a good glass. I'll have to check it out. It's way dirty. So. Oh, that's pretty. So let's turn her around and see what we can see. So I'm going to just lower this a bit so that we can see her. So this is the basket. Very pretty. Oh, I like her. That border. Yeah, that frame just didn't help with showing how pretty she is. Let me go grab a board where I can put her on. So far, let me get a little bit more light. It's quite sunny today, so I don't want this to get too washed out. So... That blue is just so fabulous. And there's that little house. I'm gonna go turn it around here in a second with all her initials and that cool border. And that basket is awesome. Let me see what the colors are of the house. They're actually not that much different than what you see in the front. So this was pretty much stitched in dark green, dark blue, gold, and beige from the looks of it. Very, very pretty. So this is, she's going to go in the box for a bit. I'm not ready to do this yet. Up here, this eyeball of that bird's going to be interesting. That looks like a big wad of interestingness. So, I don't see anything that, you know, looks like it's having infestations of any kind. It's just dirty. That's all. So, I'm going to move her side and we'll grab the other one. Okay. It's going to be a lot of glare, so I want to get the glass out for you first. So, let me open her. And this one is going to be... Mm, I think I'm going to leave this as is. It's going to be, I'm going to take all the nails because I will collect them. Because they are, if I can get them out. They are the old kind. Okay. 
Ooh, these are they're good. So I'm gonna pause for a second and then um, take some of these out because this is gonna be laboratus. Okay, last two coming out. There was one up here that I almost thought I wasn't gonna get out. I don't know what they did, but it was in there so bad, I actually had to take a hammer to it. So this is all ugh, stuff I'm not going to keep. And this is just of no benefit to anything or anyone. Ugh. I just want to get all the dirt out of here. Oh, they stitched her to the paper. Ooh, lovely. I see you. Means. So, there was absolutely zero barrier. So you can see all the muck and crime. And this is where they stitched her on the paper. I'm gonna um, see if I ditch this first. Okay, so I'm gonna try and remove the paper because this is also not good because it's almost for certain not asset free. But I can't, I have to undo the stitches in order to get it all the way off. But I just want to see. That is a heavy duty linen thread. There you have it. It actually looks really good. I still am going to have to, you know, go do the little details and get that off. But and vacuum her. <laughs> I have like a little tabletop vacuum, but it's not hooked up right now. And you know, for for keyboard and stuff, that works real well to get you know some of the dust off and you know some of the debris and sand that sat there. But you know, there is when you go compare here. You know, back to front, it's not too different. That really preserved well. And it has the smell of an attic. So that's one of the ways I can always tell if I actually can smell the sampler. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but this smells so old and so attic and so basement, attic, whatever. It's, yeah. So, be strong, be steadfast in fair virtue's cause. Not fear, reprove, not covet vain applause. Heed not of evil tongues the envious, can't read that, strife? nor the loud storms that rage through human life. On truth, firm basis, let your hope remain, and seas may page and tempest rear in vain. Rage and tempest rear in vain. Margaret Saunders. 1815. I hope you can see enough. Look at the pretty border. She's got not one. She's got two right there at the bottom. Some of them just used this as a border. She did this one and this one. I love this one so much. That's why I wanted her. And I love acorns. It's another thing I liked about her. And of course the cute little deer. Pretty alphabet. This is also really pretty right here. But I must say I like the front better than the bright limey green in the back. <laughs> I think the colors the way they are in the front are just perfect as is. 
This is also really nice. Some unusual little bits and pieces. So anyways, this was Mary Saunders. And I forgot the name of the other one. Let me go grab it. It was Jane Richards. There we go. Two of them ready to go in the box once they're completely clean. Okay, right here. This is sweet Eliza Jane. I finished charting her. I just have a little bit to do for the Ada version. She's wrapped up, rolled up, and ready for the museum box. And she will be unpacked and framed once we're moved. But... Here's everybody's favorite, the girls. <laughs> Everybody loves these two. This is Rosanna Tyndale. She was 12, big sister, 1840. And this was Elizabeth Tyndale, age 9, 1840. Rosanna was at Elizabeth's wedding. Rosanna never married, and I have... Oh my goodness, so much history on both of them. I gave all the stuff to my husband and maybe he can produce a blog post, maybe not, because, I mean, he still works, so his time is limited. Um, but there is a lot of history and they actually have a, t a house that they owned um, on the land that they farmed and um, Rosanna, I think, died died in that house and there's the tombstone with mom and dad and family members so there's a whole bunch of history they also had another sister I think Harriet I have to go through that again it's gonna take me a bit but this is well there is you know a little difference between front and back but not ginormous I mean it's pretty good, you know, front or back. But um, this was stitched with wool, so there is a lot of eating that went on. Let me go grab the board so it doesn't flop. So, like right here, that's gone. That's gone. There's a lot of stuff that's that's missing, and I was fortunate that they used each other's pattern. So sometimes if a piece was missing, I was able to go over to the other sampler and find, you know, the stitch there. So this is Rosanna, and she spells her name very interesting. Every time I, you know, type out the name, the spell checker wants to fix it, so that's okay. Let me put little Elizabeth up here. I know several are stitching this right now. Andrea did the models and a deep fried cupcake. And oh my God, they're so scrumptious. Look at this. So, so pretty and so simple. So these are, I mean, you can stitch these on Ada. If you're an Ada stitcher, because there's nothing over one. It's just, you know, little verse, bunch of cute colors, bunch of cute houses. And I still haven't decided. They came in really tiny, not period correct, little rickety frames. And I don't know if I want to put them together in a frame or separate. I haven't decided. But they are kind of pretty aren't they? <laughs> the Tyndale sisters. And I have my eye on another couple of sister samplers, so we'll see if we can expand the collection of sister samplers. So here's these girls. Let me go grab the next thing. Okay, so this next thing is going to be my new start. I think I am going to be a serial starter. But um, I want to get the model stitched myself for this one because it's something I think I can get done pretty quickly because it's not too involved. And um, this is, let me pull it up so you can see the bottom. 
it's the sampler. I posted it earlier. Um, Mary Jane Smith, and it's from June 1833. And it's cute. Let me show you over here. She did 13 years and then forgot the TH and popped it on top. We often see corrections. I'm assuming... Obviously, she stitched the border first that she had plans for in here, but wasn't sure, or she stitched everything up top so close together that she didn't need the space. It was actually framed with this folded down in the frame. And um, when you look closely, there is not, there is like a lot of beige, and a little bit of blue. So this actually, I'm going to flip it in a second, is, is blue. So what I want to do is, because there's really not that many colors, this is, I don't know what they did. This is like really hard. They spilled something like glue or something on it. Don't know what it is, but it's solid and so stained. But you can see the blue. You know, it's just a few areas. And most of the rest is beige, and it's just a lighter and a darker beige. So I was looking at, I'm not 100% of sure on the beige yet, because I'm still waiting on a couple to come in. But I want to stitch it on French Vanilla. And this is, let me go, those are the colors, let me leave that with you. Yeah, this is ancient. This store no longer exists. That's where I used to work. That's how old this is. <laughs> Gotta go check what the um, fabric company is. It's French Vanilla, and I think it's Fiber on Whim, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And it is, once again, from them. Oh, no, it's not. It's R&R &R, French Vanilla. So, um, this is gray and this is beige and I'm still waiting on a couple of other samples where there is, what I'm looking for is a, a light and a dark section of beige. So I'll have to see how that goes. So until I have those, I really can't start because obviously it starts up here with Oh, it starts with a blue, so I could put the start the border and do the blue, but then after two A's, we're going right into the beige. So that's going to be the start, and hopefully I'll have some progress to show. And let me go grab the next thing. Okay, and here comes the next list thing on the list, on my honeydew list, and this many are waiting for her. Actually, I gotta go turn her the other way. And she's a fab sampler. And there's like many questions to what the thing is off the side. We haven't figured. It's Sarah Sophia Snow, H10. It's also silk on gauze. And she almost used the identical cloth. See? woven edge here again so she could go long <laughs> with her with her stitch lovely house you know there's cute stuff I mean this is I started charting her and I have like I don't think I started the verse yet up here but I have the border done and I got the dog and I think I started the tree so I have some of it done Love the gate and the house. Oh, so cute. And there is not too much difference front to back. She just used very muted color. About the only thing, it's a little, like this is, a little more clay colored. Ooh, snake eyes. I didn't even notice that. And, um, you know, here it's just slightly more red, but not, you know, when you look here. It's not that much, and I think the colors I picked, I picked for the back of these just to give it a little more vibrancy on the front, but there is not that much difference going on. And this is a little bit more knotted on the back. 
little bit more all over the place when you know when you see that so let me flip her around so boy every time I see speckles it's like ah something in here <laughs> but um I still have her original frame um, at the moment, you know, like I've mentioned before, everything pretty much is going to be packed because um, in a box because I want to be able to take all the samplers with me in the car. They're, they're not going in a moving crate. They're not going, um, you know, are going to be packed. The frames are going to be packed. And since most of them didn't have museum glass anyways, you know, I don't have to worry about the glass breaking because I'm not taking that with me. So they just have to wrap the frames real well. But all the samplers are going to be with us in the car, so guard it by the cats. <laughs> so I'm calling this the love and peace sampler. Because both of those things are basically what's important in life. Nothing else really matters. Love and peace. Okay, and here's the last treasure for today. And this is a sampler. It's from Sweden, and it's from 1877 by Matilda Menson, and it's the from the town Nörköping in Sweden. So this one was quite a surprise. I love what I saw on the front, but wait till you see the back. So this is the frame it came in. This is probably a 50s frame because it's that baked plastic. And this is the back. How gorgeous is that? <laughs> so I have already plans for it. So there will be. And look at how meticulously this is stitched. Let me bring it up close. I mean, I could easily flip the camera mirror image it and I wouldn't even have to do anything. It would look stitched front as back. That's how perfect she was. Let me get the other side and I'm going to chart it. Well, I'm going to do one chart, but I'm going to do both colorways because they're just so different. And I'm going to use over dye thread. So the fabric right here is 40 count um, latte from Wim, Fiber on Wim. And I'm going to put it here because that fabric is a really good match. And these are your front colors. And these are the back colors. And both are gorgeous, and I would have a really hard time deciding which one I'd want to stitch because they're both so pretty. So this right here is, let me see, Pamlico, River Rock, and Schnickley, Mulberry, Loden, and Battleship. So let me know which one you like best. The upper front or the lower back I may just have to do them both give one to each stitcher but I really really like these so I hope you enjoyed today's floss tube I'll see you around I may have to change my day because I thought I could do this Tuesdays but Tuesdays is actually not the best day for me so I may have to move it to Wednesdays we'll see see you later bye